The first book of Samuel, session 48. We continue with 1 Samuel chapter 22. So we saw yesterday how Doeg or Dog killed all the priests. But then in verse 20, one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiatar, escaped. And he fled. Where, where did he flee? So all the sons of the priest and all the other priests, all of them were murdered. They were butchered. They were slaughtered. But one God made one priest escape. And this was Abiatar, one of the very own sons of poor priest Ahimelech. The man who didn't deserve to die. All his sons were killed and only one escaped. And where do you think he went? If the, if the Saul Doeg Antichrist system, government of the world, is killing all God's people and all the people who's helping God's people, then there's only one place to flee to. And that is to the one that the government is persecuting. Saul is persecuting David. So Ahimelech's son, Abiatar, is fleeing to David. There's no other place to go. The rest of the country is all a danger zone. It's all a war zone. So there's nobody, no, nobody else will, will look after you. Nobody else will protect you. Everybody will just deliver you in the hand of the king. You have no other choice but to turn to the one that is the reason why the government wants to destroy everyone. And that reason is David. That reason is Yeshua. So we have to flee to Yeshua. And if the enemy catches us um, without Yeshua and we're still fleeing to him, then it's not going to be fantastic for you. Your end result will not be so nice. But to find Yeshua, to be with David, to be um, protected and safe, in the cave, not in the palace, but in the cave with David, is the only place that Abiatar knows where his life is going to be preserved. So Abiatar is choosing the cave um, above any other place where he could have run to. And these three names, we know that Ahimelech is um, Ach Melech, Ach is brother, Melech is king. So Ahimelech is, is my brother, is king. And Ahimelech is the son of Ahitub. And, and, and Ahitub in the Hebrew is Ahitub. Ah is brother. And Tub or Tov means good. My brother is good. My brother has beauty, gladness, welfare, goodness, joy. My brother is good. And Abiatar is, is Abba Yatar. Ab Yatar, Abba is father. Yatar is to, um, to be a remnant that is reserved. The remnant of Abba, the remnant of our God. We are the, the left behind people, the remnant people. Um, the remnant of the seed of the woman is whom the dragon fights against. In Revelation 14 verse 12. So it's the, God says even to Elijah in the Old Testament. Although it looks like everybody is against me. I have a remnant. God has always had a remnant. And it's this remnant of Yahuwah, our Abba. The son of our um, brother is good. Um, well, the grandson, Abiatar is the grandson of Ahitub. My brother is good. And he's the son of Achimelech, my, my brother, the king. Look at the king, the good king, the brother, the God, and the left behind. How it's beautifully in, in the Hebrew, we can see how, how this kind of human being that escapes out of... Um, because you know what? Saul at the end of the day is also supposed to be brother. They, they are all of the same nation. But but the the brother, like Yeshua says, it's not my enemy that's lifting his heel against me. It's my own brother. So the kind of person that is escaping out of the hand of the deceiving family member, deceiving brother and sister in the truth, supposed to be, they escape and they go to David, the beloved. They are the remnant of the seed of father that has... Um, uh, remained true and loyal and faithful. And now Abiatar 
um, my, my father, the remnant, my father, the one who is preserved, the preserved of Abba. He is escaping to David, the beloved. And this paints the, the bigger picture of how we as the human beings that is returning to God, we are the beloved. Although we might only find protection in the not so nice conditions of a cave, we leave behind all our worldly wealth, maybe in the end days. But we find in the cave, Adulam, remember, the justice of God's people, where we find justice as the beloved of God, as the remnant of the seed of our Father. And again, I just remind you, the name of David means beloved. And in Romans 1 verse 7, um, Paul is writing to all the believers in Rome that the, the verse reads like this. To all of you in Rome, the beloved of God, the David of God, you are called to be saints. Now, Revelation talks about the remnant of the seed who obeys the law and who keeps the testimony of Yeshua. And it also talks about the saints, you know, the, the saints of God who keeps the law and has the testimony of Yeshua. The remnant is the saints of the end days, and they are called beloved. Paul calls them beloved, and that is the name of David. David the beloved. So David is um, looking at what physically happened to him. Yes, that's in a historical context. Looking at his messianic prophecy. Beautiful to see Yeshua and everything he does. But also looking at the meaning of his name and what he represents um, in, the, in terms of God's beloved uh, remnant. So continuing uh, chapter 22, verse 21. And Abitar, Abiatar showed David that Saul had killed all the priests. I think David, oh, I think it was horrible for him to hear that. And, and the kind of man that David was, I can just imagine how he blamed himself. And David said unto Abit, Abiatar, I know, I knew it. That that day, when Duek the Edomite was there, that he will surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of your father's house. So David said, you know what? I, I actually saw Doeg. Like we said yesterday, are we paying attention? Do we know our enemy? Can we spot the problems and the risks? And David actually saw Doeg. He, he admits it here. And in the back of his head, like we said yesterday, your conscience mind, your, your, your gewete, your conscience, the, the ruach agreeing with your conscience is sometimes trying to tell you something. So when David was with um, Ahimelech and he saw Doeg, something in his subconscious told him, Doeg is going to run to Saul and tell Saul everything. But David didn't act on that hunch that he got. And that caused, he now says, I have caused the death of all the people of your father's house. When we are not going to be aware in the end days, we will be the cause of other people's problems and maybe even dem demise. We have to learn how to listen to the voice of God, even when it tries to warn us through our own subconscious. So David says, abide you with me, you know, stay with me. Do not fear, for he that seeks my life seeks your life too. But with me, you shall be in safe God. Yeshua says, the servant is not bigger than his master. They persecuted me. They will persecute you. We have the same enemy as what Yeshua has. We are in the same league, in the same um, God views us as his beloved the same as he viewed his son, the beloved, that was persecuted so unfairly. Saul persecuted David unfairly. No reason. So Yeshua was persecuted by, the, you know, by all the people in, in 2,000 years ago unfairly. But, but his disciples, he, he teaches them everything that he is going through to prepare them for what they will go through as well. Um, the two sons of thunder... Um, um, John and, and uh, Yaakov, 
they wanted to sit next to Yeshua in the kingdom to come. And Yeshua said, will you even be able to drink my bitter cup? And they said, yeah, sure, of course. And then um, Yeshua said, you know what? You are going to drink my bitter cup. So what Yeshua went through, his disciples went through, and we are experiencing a lot of the rejection and the humiliation and the rebellion and the persecution that Yeshua and his disciples has gone through. Not in the same measure, not close to the same measure that they've gone through. That is preserved for the end days. For the end day persecution will be like no other time before. So, so God is preparing us. The same people that's looking for, for you to kill you. It's the same people that's looking to kill me. And because you are in the same league as me, if you stay with me, I'll protect you. Because it's like I'm protecting my own life. God will protect us because it's like protecting his own son. And again, I, I remind you, this is not saying that we will be raptured. It's not saying we're going to have no tribulation. But in the tribulation, in the cave, running away from Saul, David was protected so much so that we today still read his Psalms like we did yesterday. So the, the, the energy and the capacity of God's kingdom will survive. <clears throat> Even if individuals like you and I, if we lose our lives. But the, the beloved um, called out saints of God, the remnant of the seed of his bride, are the ones that will be preserved if we get into the same camp as Yeshua. If um, Abiatar gets into the same cave as David, then, then the protection is there. And for me, that's, that's so, so beautiful. And do you remember when we read at the beginning of chapter 22, Verse 2, everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto David in the cave Adullam. And here in verse uh, 20, Abiatar is in distress. Because of the persecution of, of innocent people, the distressed innocent people gathers themselves with David. And the people that gathers themselves around Paul, uh, Paul, listen to me, King Saul, they are gathering there because they're going to get treasures and position and power. And they, they want to do, even if they know it's not right, like the soldiers knew it wasn't right to kill the priests, but they remained the soldiers of Saul. They didn't also go to David and say, listen, you're, you know what, we're going to leave Saul, we're going to follow you. And you know what? You are the king. Saul is, is becoming totally demon-possessed. He's even killing priests, man. So the people that's gathering themselves around the Antichrist system is, is, is gathering there because they want, um, they, they want the worldly things and the worldly survival. Whereas the people in distress is going to David, is going to Yeshua. And if we jump now to chapter 23, verse 6. It came to pass when Abiatar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David in the, um, uh, in the cave, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. What is the ephod? The, the ephod is what the priest wears with the 12 stones, the precious stones, on his breastplate. When he does service in the tabernacle, he is wearing the 12 tribes, the people of God, on his chest, close to his heart. And now, when Abiatar, God, I'm sure, made Abiatar not only survive because some of the priests, some of the good priests had to survive, um, but he also made him survive and go to David. Because if David represents the church, the beloved, the remnant of the seed, we need the priest in, in our midst. We have Yeshua, our priest, with the effort of the 12 tribes on his breastplate. We need a priest on our inside. David is a warrior, but Abiatar is the priest. So the warrior and the priest will encourage the people to keep on fighting and not lose courage. And the priest will be the one that will do the priestly duties. The sacrifices and the prayer and the intercession. We need these kind of people in our small group where we are hiding and, and fleeing from persecution. 
So it's beautiful. Abide with me. Come stay with me. Not only so your life is saved, but also so that our lives is saved. So that you as our priest can pray for us and you can stand in with God for us. And and, and you can represent the whole priestly um, intercession for this group of people. And if we run to Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 2, I'm just going to read a few verses here. Verse 4, um, and say unto him, run, speak to this young man and say, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle. For I, Yahuwah, will be unto her a wall of fire that is round about her, and I will be the glory in the midst of her. So David was protecting, because Jerusalem, remember, the um, Revelation say, says she comes out of the new Jerusalem as a bride, adorned for her husband. Jerusalem has always been the bride of God. Yes, she became a whore with all the um, idolatry. And that's why Yeshua had to die so that the whore can find repentance and come back and be the bride again so that the marriage can happen. So Jerusalem is the beloved. And, and out of all the nations that is against her and persecuting her, like Saul is persecuting David, God says, you know, wherever you are, my Jerusalem, my beloved, my church, my people, the remnant of my seed, I will be a wall of fire round about you, like David was. And I'll be the glory in the midst of you. Not saying the priest is the glory, but the priest, when he goes into the Holy of Holies, he, he's in the presence of the glory of God. And he brings the glory of God into our midst, reminding us who this God is that we serve. So we mustn't be scared. Deliver yourself, verse 7, um, O Zion, you that dwell with the daughters of Babylon. Come out of Babylon and, and be my Jerusalem so that I can protect you. Sing and rejoice, O daughters of Zion, for lo, I come and I will dwell and I'll be in the midst of you. Beautiful how God is um, giving us the best advice and the best encouragement even in our worst conditions and when we think um, all hope is lost all right forgive me today is a short session we are busy uh, pruning um, trees and it's quite a big job so we're ending here for today and uh, tomorrow we're going to look at David's adventures all the interesting things that David has gone through and what it means for us in our end day adventures Come on, you know, this whole journey, even the, everybody is afraid of the persecution and the troubles and the, um, uh, you know, central bank digital currency and the mark of the beast. And, you know, we are afraid of these things. But let's start seeing what an adventure it is. And let's look forward to the adventures that we are going to live out and and, and, and as we live those adventures out, we are going to see how the Bible becomes alive. And the things the Bible talks about is, is going to come alive in our journey, in this adventure. Yes, there's going to be fear. Yes, we're going to be hiding in caves. Yes, people are going to get killed. But wow, what an adventure. What stories are we going to tell to each other? When David and we sit around with David around the, the campfire one day during the Feast of Tabernacles in the millennium. And, and he tells us about all his adventures. And we say, David, we know exactly what you mean. We studied your adventures line by line. And that gave us the um, information, the warnings, the encouragement, the secrets and the mysteries. And that is how we also had our end day adventure. And we're going to be sharing stories with David and Abiatar and Ahimelech and, and Moses and Abraham and Yeshua and Paul and Peter and John. So it's an adventure, guys. It's, we can, in spite of the fear, we can have our faith build up like living stones into a living temple, in a living tabernacle with a wall of fire our God as a wall of fire around us.